Chris, it's really quite emotional for me to be here with you because uh, I first came here in 1964 to do my doctorate at the Brain Research Institute and got the degree in 1968. Uh, at that time, neurophysiology was the rage and that's what I was working on. Uh, and it really has been a, a really a, what, what set my life trajectory, even though it went in many directions, it was really formulated here. Um, and so I come to you to, to kind of look back over these decades and see yes. where brain research has gone. You're the director of the Brain Research Institute. There haven't been very many directors during this time and everybody's been illustrious. So how can we begin to look at the field today and uh, to understand the enormous growth in, in, in brain research? I think there's only been five directors actually and, uh, and yes, they, they've stayed there a long time yeah. because I think they've appreciated the job and it's, and it's, it's, it, 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 since 1950, this field is, is really taken off. Um, I think some of the biggest changes have been in genetics, understanding the molecules involved. I mean, when I did my PhD, when you did your PhD, we were talking about we, we, we barely understood the structure of insulin, right? right. I mean, that just, just had been sequenced. We knew the protein sequence right. of insulin. But we, now we know, you know, the 30,000 genes. Hmm. And, and, and we know the different splicing. And we, we now know the, the structure of, of the molecules which make up the brain. I think that's really changed um, our, 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 our approach and our knowledge base enormously for understanding the brain. And really uh, changed the uh, perspectives by which everybody looks at neuroscience at this point. You can't look at neuroscience today without having a genetic and, and molecular Thanks. biology basis. That's right. And that is the building blocks. The building blocks are the genetics. But now we have the complications on top of the genetics, which are incredibly yeah. difficult to sort out. First, there's the epigenetics, which is the control of expression of the different genes. And this, this changes through development. It changes, it's different in every cell. The, you know, the, 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 the different histones and the different methylation patterns on, on the DNA, which control expression. These are the ways that even though the DNA in all of our cells are exactly the same, those controls determine which of the genes are expressed as neurons or as liver cells or as, uh, That's right. as that, uh, small intestine, all the different ways that that occurs. And then within, even within categories, the hundreds of different kinds of neurons and how they work and how they change, uh, all that's the expression of the genetic structure. Yes, and, and every neuron is completely an in individual if you really mm. ask it <laughs> at those levels because yeah. it has different expression patterns, it has it has receptors in different places, it has different numbers of receptors, and different um, neurotransmitters have, have changed in the receptor number. Mm. And, you know, every, every, every neuron is a complete individual. Not only people are individual, but every <laughs> neuron is an individual. So uh, that, 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 that we understand now. Obviously, you know, neurons certain, certainly adapt in similar ways in, 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 in similar areas, but they are, they are individuals. Mm. And we're now beginning to understand a little bit more about how the brain can, can encode so much information. The idea of, um, of, of the spines, the different, the, 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 the different communication between the, um, the, the, the axonal branches and the dendrites and, and these, these spines which form um, uh, b between in, 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 in the synapses. And so the axon takes information away and transmits it and to dendrites which receive it. And, yeah. and how many dendritic spines for reception might be on an individual neuron order of magnitude? Yeah, I mean, uh, tens of thousands. Tens of thousands of, of receptors on a single neuron getting information Expense. from tens of thousands of other potential yeah. neurons integrating in some way and then sending its own signal after it does whatever processing it does. 
we're now understanding that the, these these um, individual synapses can have little brains of them th their <laughs> own. Um, they, they they some of them express RNA and they can uh, translate RNA to proteins. And of course, they have their individual machinery for controlling the number of receptors mm. on the cell surface mm. and how they can respond. So they. Mm kind of little individual brains mm. on each of these synapses. So I'm hearing now that um, that genetics is obviously a core to the field of neuroscience, and now the second piece is that to understand neuroscience in terms of the, the unit of the neuron, the individual neuron, how that works, and the, the efferent going away from it, the afferent, what it receives, and how that works on the synaptic level. So those are two kind of core ways of thinking about modern neuroscience. And the circuits. Okay, and and the then we're talking about the circuit. So circuits would be an, another category of understanding brain circuitry. Brain circuitry is now probably one of the biggest challenges that we're all facing is, you know, to understand the circuitry. To understand, we're, we're particularly interested in the opiate circuitry. How, how, where, which neurons actually are responsible for opiate reward. This is... Which helps us to understand the reward system of yes. the brain. Yes. Which is one kind of circuitry, very important circuitry in the brain, but there are a right. lot of others. There's lots of circuits. Okay. Thousands of circuits. And they and they change as well. Circuits are not just um, put in there and stay as they are. We we know that the reward system is changing markedly, say with pain. So the the opiate reward system changes in a pain state. Mm. So you know opiates are very good treatments for Sure. For, for, acute pre, uh, for, for acute pain, they're very good analgesics. Mm. But we know that pain changes how the opiates produce their reward. Mm. So do you see integration between these three areas, the genetics, the single cell, and the circuitry to understand the, the totality of, of how the brain works? Yes, I, I do. And, and, and I, I, I think this is the goal of, 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 of modern neuroscience is, is to to, to arrange all of these different areas mm. and to understand these different areas. And this is why I, I, I see the, the, the biggest science being team-based team science in the future. Mm. That, that we, 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 we can't be an expert in all these different areas, all these different techniques required for the circuitry, for the um, analysis of the genetics, for the epigenetics, all these areas. We, 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 we don't have individuals who, who, who have specialization in all of these enough to answer the big questions. So team-based science is, mm. I think, the future of neuroscience. It's, it's not the uh, individual. Um, I think it's becoming much more. We need um, multiple brains to, <laughs> to sort out the big problems now.